students welcome to Pankti's tutorial. In this video lecture we will be seeing the definition of a causal LTI system. We all know a causal system is a system which would respond only for the values of the input which are related to past and present values. It will have a zero response for the future values of the input. So that system is called as a causal system. Now here the system that I am considering to explain the causality of a LTI system is a discrete time system. This discrete time system has an impulse response which is denoted with Hn. Now when I give Fn as the input, the output Yn is given as the convolution of Hn and Fn. So let us see the restriction on the values of Yn so that it only gives the response of an LTI system and that system is a causal system. Now y of n is given as fn convolution hn and the formula that we have for convolution of discrete time signal is summation k is equal to minus infinity to infinity f of k h of n minus k. From the commutative property of convolution we have fn convolution hn equal to hn convolution fn. So it can also be written as summation k is equal to minus infinity to infinity h of k f of n minus k. Now the next thing that I am doing is I am taking yn to be equal to this summation and I am spreading out the limits. I am spreading out the limits in such a manner that first limit is going from minus infinity to minus 1. The next value is in the value of hn for 0 and the next limit is going from k is equal to 1 to infinity. So I have just spreaded this k is equal to minus infinity to infinity limits in 3 parts. Now what we see here is when I substitute the value of k into this input function or fn minus k function, the values that I get represent the future values of the input to the system. When I substitute here the value 0 for n, this represents the present value of the input and here when the limit is going from k is equal to 1 to infinity, this is representing the past values of the input. From the definition of a causal system, we know that for a causal system the output response should depend only on the present and the past values of the system. So therefore, when the system is causal, its response that would mean h of k should be equal to 0 and this should be equal to 0 because we do not want it to respond to future values of the input and the future values of the input are occurring where k is less than 0. So for a causal system h of k should be equal to 0 for k less than 0. So we have this as a result for a causal system that would mean that h of k is equal to 0 for k less than 0 because the system that we are defining is a causal system which will not respond to the future values of the input. Now when the variable would have been n, the function would be given by h of n is equal to 0 for n value less than 0. Now in this definition of convolution, we have it as h of k. Therefore, when we are defining the causal system, this summation would change and it would change to this form because this summation is becoming 0 because hk is becoming 0 for k less than 0. So it will have only values when k is greater than 0. So the summation for now will go from k is equal to 0 to infinity h of k multiplied with f of n minus k to define a causal system. Now the next definition of the system that we have is in this form or in this expression. Here h of h is in the form of h n minus k. When we have h in the form of h n minus k, so at the places where we had k here, there are now I am substituting it as h n minus k. So h n minus k will be equal to 0 for n minus k less than 0 to define a causal system and then comes out to be equal to this. So h n minus k is 0 for k greater than n when it has to define a causal system. So when this is defining a causal system, we will have this summation values only from k minus infinity to n because for k greater than n, this function is becoming 0. So therefore, the expression for convolution can be written as k is equal to minus infinity to n f of k h of n minus k and these both definitions define a system that is causal. Now let us look at how these expressions would change when we see or when we say 
that the input is a causal input. When I say that the input is causal, that would mean that the input signal will not have any future value. So when the input is causal, it is defined as 0 for n less than 0. When the n variable changes to a dummy variable k, the definition would be then f of k is equal to 0 for k less than 0. Let's see in the expression of convolution where we had f of k. So this is that expression. Now in this expression, the function value or the input value is becoming 0 for k less than 0. Therefore, the summation will now change from 0 to infinity because for k less than 0, the f of k value is 0. So we will get values only in this duration of time. Let's look at the next definition of f of n minus k. Now here the variable is n minus k. So at the place where I had k, I will substitute it as n minus k. When I want this kind of a signal to not, to not possess any future values, then it will be 0 for n minus k less than 0 and this would give that this function will be 0 for k greater than n. So let's look at the definition or the expression of convolution where we had this as the function f n minus k and this is that. And we know when we want the input signal to be causal, in that case the function or this function is becoming 0 for all the values of k which are greater than n. So that means this function or this summation will change now from minus infinity to n because above n the function value is 0. So here the convolution expression that we get will be summation k is equal to minus infinity to n h of k multiplied with f of n minus k. The next task that we are going to do is we will see that the system is also causal and the input is also causal. When both of them are causal, let's see how this definition of convolution then changes. Now when I am talking about the case where the system and input both are causal, the definition of convolution was modified to this when we were saying that the system is causal. It got modified to these expressions when we were saying that the input is causal. Now let us see the result that we will be obtaining by comparison of these two signals to define the convolution definition for a system and an input signal which are both causal. So here when we look at this definition with f of k and h of n minus k both of them have the same expression. Here the limit is going from minus infinity to n and here the limit of summation is going from k is equal to 0 to infinity. Now when we have to combine both the features that means the system causal and the input causal feature then we have to see in both these functions that where this summation is commonly present. So this summation is going from k is equal to 0 to infinity and this summation is going from k is equal to minus infinity to infinity and when we observe this the only duration where the summation is commonly present is from 0 to n and that will happen when n is greater than 0. So the definition for a system and an input both causal can be defined as k is equal to 0 to n f of k h of n minus k and when we see the second type of expression that means this expression and this expression from that also we will get the similar kind of a definition to define the convolution theorem where both the input as well as the system are causal and they would depend only on the past and the future values of the input. Hope this video proves out to be of some use to you. Thank you for watching it and if you have liked the video, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.